Mae. What do you want to do tonight? Same thing we do every night, Pinky. Try to take over the world. Now, this is the final session in this series of classes on visualization. I like to begin each new session by recapitulating the definition so that it will keep us on course as to exactly what we're talking about. I've watched bricklayers every time a new brick our new stone is laid, he places his level upon it to be sure that it conforms and its position is correct. And so we recapitulate our definition each session here so that we can keep our minds in the groove as to exactly what we're talking about. So let us again review the definition for visualization Visualization is seeing and feeling yourself in your own mind, already being, doing, and having the good which you desire. I underline two words in this definition. I underline the word yourself. I underline the word already. I pointed out to you it is important in your visualization treatments to see your self. Don't leave yourself out when you're visualizing for something that you want. Don't just see what you want as such and leave yourself out. If you're visualizing for money, see yourself with that money. Don't just see money. Because I know of a case where a lady visualized for money and she visualized money and somebody else got the money. You must identify yourself definitely and positively with that which you visualize. I told you also in a previous lesson about someone who worked for me, custodian of one of my estates up in the mountains of California overlooking the Pacific. Very fine gentleman. And one day I drove up to the front door with a brand new blue on blue Rolls Royce Corniche. And he said, oh, Reverend, in my visualization, I had been visualizing a car just like this. To which I replied, but you probably didn't see yourself with it. I got it. Again, it's important to point out Many times people do such successful visualizing and praying for other people and not enough for themselves. Many times from the intellectual or reasoning point of view, it may seem easy to see other people, to see Rockefeller with a lot of money. Well, why can't you visualize it for yourself? You see Mrs. Astor with a lot of finery. Why can't you visualize the same for yourself? You see other so-called stars on television. And you can see them enjoying success and prosperity. Why can't you do it for yourself? Again, I want to stress this first definition for visualization. Visualization is seeing and feeling who? Yourself. In your own mind. Already, and already is underlined, already being, doing, and having the good which you desire. I want to reintroduce a term the nowness of consciousness. Say that with me. The nowness of consciousness. Say it again. The nowness of consciousness. Say it the third time. The nowness of consciousness. And the word already, as is used here, indicates the nowness of consciousness. In the subconscious area of mind, there is never but one tense, one time. What is that one time? Now, the present. What you see and what you feel, the subconscious is impressed with it as a present reality. Verily, verily, I say unto you, this day, shall you be with me in paradise. In visualization, 
You must immediately move in the room with the Lord. You immediately move into the paradise of being, doing, and having the good which you desire when? This day, now, in the present. So when you visualize and you see and you feel yourself being, doing, and having the good which you desire, don't ever introduce the future as such. Never in your treatment, whether in visualization or affirmation, say, I will be, I'm going to be. It is always, I am. Together, I am. Again, the third time, I am. For the function of visualization is to say, through mental pictures and through feeling, I am. Let the weak say, I will be strong. No, let the weak say what? I am strong. The way to become that which you want to be is to say that you are that. And visualization is probably the most effective way to say that I am. Let the poor say, I will be rich. No, let the poor say what? I am rich. And if you want something in your heart of hearts, you must say, I am the one who has this. Visualization, again, is probably the most effective way to say, I am. I want to put it this way to make it even more clear. I am is said not only verbally. I am is said also visually. I am is also said with the feeling nature. It is not enough for me to stand here and simply say, I am rich. I must say it also visually. And how do I say I am rich visually? By seeing it, by visualization, by imagination. I must feel it. Now, I think this is important, and I want to be redundant about it right here, because we've always taught you to use the power of I am. And at this particular moment, I'm telling you three ways to say I am. You say I am verbally. You say I am visually, by visualization. You say I am emotionally, by feeling. Who do you say I am? It really means who do you say that you are? Who do you see that you are? Who do you feel that you are? Who do you affirm that you are? So you see, I'm pointing out to you now several other ways to say I am. You say that you are verbally. Let's, and let's give an example of this. Let's practice it now. I say that I am rich verbally. Let's do it. Do that together right now. I am rich. That's verbally. That's what? Affirmation. All right. Now, visually. Visualization. Now, how are we going to do that? Close your eyes. Whatever. That's visualization. Also, it's imagination. Close your eyes. See yourself rich. Whatever being rich means to you, see yourself as that. In visualizing it, you are saying visually, I am rich. Now, you also say, I am emotionally feeling. Let's practice saying I am by feeling it. I'm going to give you the affirmation that I use to help me feel rich, and I've shared it with you many times, but you can never overdo it. And it's this. I feel rich and elegant. Think about what it means. Square your shoulders, whatever you need to do. You're looking in the mirror. Now, let's say it together. I feel rich and elegant. I feel rich and elegant. The third time. I feel rich and elegant. What are three ways of saying I am? Verbally, visually, 
emotionally. This is inclusive, not exclusive. Some other ways may come to be. Every day of your life, you must consciously and subconsciously be saying, I am that which I want to be. Every day of your life, you must consciously and subconsciously affirm, visualize, and emotionalize yourself as being that which you want to be already in the nowness of consciousness. Throw away I'm going to be. Now that works, but it may work more slowly. I am is God, and whatever you add to I am, you become, you express. And I am is the mystic name which the Almighty revealed to Moses. What is your name? Moses inquired of the infinite. And the reply was what? I am that I am. You know what it means? I am that which I think I am. What is your name? In other words, name is nature. What is the nature of God? What is the nature of consciousness? I am. I am that I am. I am that which I think I am. I am that which I say I am. I am that which I see that I am. I am that which I feel that I am. And this is not the truth of a God in the sky. It's the truth of the God in you. I am that which I think I am. That's the truth of every man. Say that with me. I am that which I think I am. And visualization is a most effective technique for affirming and imagining and feeling yourself to be that which you wish to be. It's an effective, a most effective technique for saying I am. Because it goes far beyond the reasoning powers. And I've given a different title to this class from this point on. And I have written the words that I want you to write. The mental process of visualization. Let's continue with the definition for visualization. I want to be redundant about seeing and feeling yourself in your own mind already being, doing, and having the good which you desire. It must be in the nowness of, of consciousness. Visualization also is deliberate, positive, creative dreaming of things into expression. It is using the imagination consciously and willfully to be what you want to be, to do what you want to do, and to have what you want to have. In the past two sessions, we used a very interesting subject. I of the mind. Say that with me. I of the mind. For this has to do with visualization. And we define I of the mind as the esoteric visional faculty of God in man which sees mental images into manifestation. So that inner visional faculty within you which sees mental images is the eye of the mind. But you must be aware of the power of the eye of the mind. What you see is what you get. So you must learn how to use the eye of your mind constructively, productively, see what you want and get what you want. The mental process of visualization. I want you to see the mental mechanics of visualization. That word can also be used, the mental mechanics of visualization. Let us actually see what happens in the mechanism of visualization. The chart that I'm about to take you through is titled Progression of an Idea Through the Factory of the Mind, the Mental Assembly Line. Now, I want to show you what happens in the mechanics of visualization. Let's start with the conscious mind. Point to the definition of the conscious mind. Let's read the definition together. The intellect, the reasoning faculty, 
whose function is to choose and select. So remember that this is the meaning of that department of mind which we call the conscious mind. Now, do you see the idea there in the conscious mind in the chart? There's an idea here. It is with the conscious mind that we select an idea, we choose an idea, we specify, we describe, we define with the intellect. So let's choose an idea now that we're going to visualize, that we're going to take through the mental process. And since most of us like the idea of money, let's take the idea of money for work purpose. All right, now we have taken our conscious mind, our intellect, and we are choosing to visualize what? Money. Not only do you choose to visualize money, you choose to have money. You choose to enjoy money, right? You choose to use money. So we're in the conscious mind. We're making this choice. You see, this is what you do before you visualize. You do what? You choose what you want. You choose what you want to be, to do, and to have. That's why we also have self-concept here under conscious mind. Because you're choosing your self-concept. Everything that you choose to visualize is a part of your self-concept because you are identifying with it. I'm not just visualizing money, but I am seeing myself with it. I see myself with lots of money. The moment you say, I see myself with lots of money, you have moved to another department of mind which we call the transliminal area of mind. Because the idea of money that we are visualizing now moves out of the conscious into the transliminal area of mind. This is where you are when you visualize. You have chosen your self-concept. You have chosen your idea. You have chosen what you desire to be, to do, and to have with the conscious mind. And now you say, I see. This is the eye of the mind. And you're moving into a transliminal area of mind. Now let's read the definition for the transliminal area of mind. That area of mind between the conscious and subconscious in which an idea is visualized and through which an idea passes into the subconscious mind. You see, before the subconscious mind can be impressed with the idea, in this case, it must be visualized. And again, when you are visualizing what area of mind or what department of mind are you in? The transliminal area of mind. Now, in the transliminal area of mind with our idea of money or any idea, we practice visualization, we practice imagination, we practice what Reverend Ike calls fulfillment, full thrillment. It means that when you visualize, when you imagine, you must be full of the feeling of being, doing, and having the good which you desire. Not only that, when you visualize, you should be thrilled with the feeling of being, doing, and having the good which you desire. I don't remember who it was, but somebody had spoke to me about visualization and said, Reverend I, it seems hard for me to visualize. If it seems hard for you to visualize, you're not doing it right. One of the most ineffective and useless forms of praying is hard praying. There should be nothing difficult about praying and about visualizing. It should be a thrill. If you are visualizing and imagining, for example, that you are rich, why should there be any stress and strain about that? Shouldn't that be a thrill? If you in your mind, in this transliminal area of mind, are seeing yourself being, doing, and having the good that you desire, should that not be a thrill? Should that not be joy unspeakable and full of glory? You're not doing it right until it becomes a thrill. You are to get lost 
in the vision, in the imagination, in the feeling, in the thrill of seeing yourself being, doing, and having the good that you desire. In our visualizing, and we'd go to that vacation spot, and I would lie out there on the beach, and feel the sand between my toes, and hear the waters, and feel the waters lapping up against my heels, and, and I order those tropical drinks. I mean, what could be difficult about that? Where's the pain, the stress, and the strain? The only strain is for me to stop and come back and realize it's 10.30 Saturday night. And I'm in New York, physically. The only difficult thing is to restrain myself instead of flying off with my subconscious mind that where it is, there I may be also. I want to stress this business of people praying hard and people making a difficulty out of visualizing. And the more you learn to thrill to your vision of being, doing, and having the good that you desire, the more easily these things will happen and after a while you will just get to that point where on the spot you will be able to speak, to imagine, and to feel things into existence. It's like that. But in religion, the whole thing is we have been taught the hard way. The hymn writer realized that once and said, Oh, what needless pains we bear. We have been taught to go through hell to get to heaven. This is why here in this ministry, we're not only in the process of learning, we're in the process of what? Unlearning. The mind must be reconditioned. The consciousness must be reconditioned. I use three words many times in my affirmations. Comfort, ease, joy, and love. And this is how visualization should be approached. Visualization should be approached with comfort, ease, joy, and love. How should visualization be practiced? It should be practiced how? With comfort, ease, joy, and love. So here we are now in the transliminal department of mind, visualizing, imagining, seeing, and feeling ourselves being, doing, and having the good which we desire. Now, the next thing that happens in this process, when we successfully see and feel ourselves being, doing, and having the good which we desire, is that this feeling, this vision, impresses itself upon the subconscious mind. I'm going to ask a series of questions that has one answer. Why do we pray to impress the subconscious mind? Why do we visualize to impress the subconscious mind? Why do we affirm the good which we desire to impress the subconscious mind? All of the good spiritual, mental, and religious work that we do, if it is done correctly, its sole purpose is to impress the subconscious mind within us. Frankly, to impress yourself. Now, in religion, we're taught that we pray to impress God in the sky. I'm going to say something Reverend Ike said here several years ago. You know, you're really never trying to impress anybody but yourself anyway. If you can ever impress it upon your mind, I am rich, you'll be rich. You'll get rich. Why do the poor get poorer and the rich get richer? Because of subconscious impression. You know, you have to be careful because my Lord is writing all the time. Why do the rich get richer? Because every day, by their words, by their vision, and by their feeling, they're saying what? I am rich. And it may be completely unconscious, subconscious. Like a person who is born to wealth. They may never understand this science as we teach it or as we understand it. A lot of people who were tremendously successful never understood the science of success. But they had the feeling. They had the idea. This is why the Bible says the law is no respecter of persons. You know, this thing works. The law is whether you understand it or not. And whether you violate it knowingly or unknowingly, you reap what you sow. A child that is born to wealth, his experience of wealth reinforces his feeling of wealth. He may not consciously say, I am rich, but he feels it. He knows it. You watch those little rich kids. They know. 
and you'll find people who may have been born in the physical circumstance of poverty, but there's just something about them that's different. One thing I always had, I always felt that I should be rich. When I was barefooted and mowing grass for 25 cents an hour, I was reeling with the feeling that I should be rich. And you know what Reverend Ike says? Fulfillment brings fulfillment.